Hello everyone, welcome to another Let's Playthrough with me, your host Tim. And today, we will begin playing through Ghost 1.0. There'll be a bit of prep here, which you can skip via a link in the lower left-hand corner, in case this little bit of what this game is and how far I've gotten doesn't interest you very much. So, Ghost 1.0 is made by the good folks who made Unepic. And like Unepic, it is a platformer. Metroidvania style. We'll be going back and forth, we'll be getting power-ups, different weapons, there's a skill system, an inventory page, pretty cool map, and it's completely voice acted this time, well, most of it is, and I really like the voice actors and actresses they have. It asks some pretty interesting questions as well along the way, and I figured, hey, you know what, this game's been fun, it's tough, and I think you guys will like it. So why not, we'll play it. So you guys are aware, this won't be blind, in fact, I intend to play the game in a separate play slot as I'm recording the game. I've already beaten the first three bosses, and I'm in the third stage at the moment. That helps you figure out how far I am. I have not beaten the game at the time which I am starting this recording, but I will probably have beaten the game before I finish it, if that makes any sense. I don't really have anything else to say, let's go ahead and start a new game up, and then you'll see what the game is like. Okay, oh, and you should know that there's no walking in this game, so you won't have to deal with that. Um, that said, I will talk occasionally. You shouldn't probably expect me to talk all the time in this one. I especially will not be talking over any of the cutscenes or any of the in-game banter and or dialogue as they happen. Alright, so first we'll pick an empty slot. We'll start a new game, because I definitely want the tutorial. And we need a game name for us, so we'll choose... Choose Lottery. Okay, we have a choice of game modes. I'm currently playing classic mode, and I'm going to stick to that because I understand what the game is like. So, you can pause this play video right now if you want to read what the differences are. That's survival mode. And here's classic mode. This is the one that we'll be playing. So, let's give it a go. And a difficulty setting. So, I like average. Uh, we're going to stick with medium. I'm not comfortable with hard at the moment. The game's really tough as it is on medium for me because I'm not very good at the game. Or rather, I'm not good enough for hard, I think. So let's go ahead and play medium. And I'll see you guys in the game. Here we go. Ghost, do you hear me? Loud and clear. You're coming up to the security checkpoint. We're going to hold communications until you reach your destination. Enjoy the ride. And the new star product of the giant Nakamura Corporation has become a revolution in artificial intelligence. We are talking about the Naka, a new robot that has become the perfect housekeeper in millions of homes around the world. It imitates human behavior so well that it can understand, learn, and do anything. Those fools are playing God. They have no idea what they're doing. They constructed a whole new intelligent race. Artificial beings who can think like us, have their own desires, and make their own decisions, but without human limitations. Do you know what this means? I know. The potential of this new intelligence is infinite. And it must be ours. Ghost, Boogan here. 
I provided you with a discharge gun. It has capacitors which hold a maximum of 32 rounds at a time. They're always recharging, so ammo will always only be a few seconds away. Unlimited ammo, huh? Let's take this toy for a spin. While you're busy with that door, I'll have fun testing this beauty on some crates. Alright everyone, hello! Welcome to the actual game! This is the tutorial, so we're not going to have too much difficulty. The game will pause it's doing right now, and it'll flash the tips in the upper right-hand corner. So in this case, it's telling me how to move my gun around. The game's just like on Epic, kind of, in that the game's, well, real-time and re require me moving around and shooting and all sorts of stuff. I am using a Logitech gamepad for this. I can't imagine playing the game with a mouse and keyboard, but I suppose you can do so. I know it does support it, but I have a gamepad. were down. Was I making a lot of noise? Uh, yes. Maybe a little too much. From now on, please only use force when strictly necessary. One last thing, Ghost. For security reasons, all future comms should start with the code name Houston. Acknowledged. Alright, let's get out there and not destroy things. So the game has lots of these sealed doors. They're kind of hard to see at first because they blend in with the with the surroundings so well. You can't destroy them. You'll be able to open them later on with a little strange assistance. Outside some doors are these symbols. In this case, this is a cargo room. But it's shut. You can't get in there. There's a robot in there. He's doing his robot things, but we're not getting in there. This one's probably the same. We should probably check out all the rooms anyway, just to be safe. Looks safe. I mean, if it wasn't safe, you'd be destroying everything to make it safe. There goes one of those worker bots. Looks pretty good. I really like the graphic for our heroine here. I especially like how she runs and she's holding her gun around like that. It's pretty awesome looking. This is a speech bubble. When we walk over here, the game's going to have some dialogue for us, and the game will generally pause while it does so. A lot of robots moving crates across an overhead bridge. Those could be supplies moving in and out of Nakamura. Ghost, find a way into that corridor. Quietly, if you don't mind. Roger. I love the voice actress who did it, Ghost. It's, she is amazing. Looks like a century ahead. Houston wants stealth? I'll show him stealth. Okay, Ghost. Keep out of sight. Okay, so this tells us that we can crouch down and go down platforms. There we go. Sometimes the game will pause for us when it displays those. After we've seen something like that for one time, we will be able to just rapidly ignore them. I don't actually know what happens if this thing sees you. So far, I've always managed to sneak past it. It doesn't notice our hair, either. That'd be kind of weird if it did. Houston, I have utilized stealth as per your request. This room isn't even on the alarm grid. You could have just shot... it. <laughs> Aggressive girls are the best girls. Let's head to... Oh, well, I guess we'll keep going. We gotta make it to that... Panel. Oh, secured door. All right, let's see what this red blinking panel is then. Houston, we have a problem. This panel says it requires security clearance blue. We already have our team working on it. It should be opening now. Auto <laughs> 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 security initiated. Nice one. Ghost, our IT team seems to have encountered a problem. Could you investigate the area? When the power goes out like this, we can find a, well, a lever to open it. That's it down there. I want the, oh, yeah, you know what? I just realized that's a power button or a power symbol by it. How about that? I'm seeing it a little closer to my monitor than I normally would. Okay, cool. 
Hmm. Oh, there's another power thing. Keep, might as well keep putting the power back on. We need it to take the lifts down anyway. Oh, our gun. In the lower court, the lower sections of my screen here, you can see the gun down there. Notice there's 32 shots. It will begin recharging one shot whenever that blue meter fills, refilling up to our maximum amount of bullets. Houston, I'm in front of a strange device. Look, they have a 3D printer. If we can scan the model of our robot, we could print from there. You mean we could create more robots if Ghosts gets destroyed? That's it, man. Jesus, it's like having infinite lives. Houston, are you there? Sorry, Ghost. Operations Chief here. Access the far terminal for us. Acknowledged. Houston, I'm in front of the terminal. Instructions? Connect the transmission device to the console. I'm on it. Device connected. Can you access it? Bingo! Link has been established. All right, Ghost. This printer will allow us to create a new robot for you should your current one be destroyed. Place yourself on the printer. We're going to scan you. Acknowledged. Scan finished. We can continue. Yep, if we're destroyed here, a new robot will be printed for us right here. And then we can continue our quest. There'll be many of these locations as we go through the game. And we'll be able to use these as teleporters as well. Ghost, Operations Chief here. We're diverting resources to opening the next door. Please stand by. Man, why do you say Operations Chief? And what's up with the voice modulator? To make her comfortable, she's used to large operations with established companies. If she finds out it's just us two, it may make teamwork more... complicated. I don't know, man. You're making it plenty complicated already. We're paying for her services, right? That fact alone should be enough for her to work with us. Trust me, Boogan. Appearances are very important. Do you two realize that you've left your comm lines open? Hello. You've reached the voice mailbox of... Operations Chief. Please leave your message after the beep. You don't have to pretend you're some sort of secret organization. Beep. Hello, this is Ghost. Victor told me you're two geeks with money who hired my services. Am I right, Operations Chief? Or should I say, Jacker? Bloody Victor! Ha 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 ha! She caught you! Victor and I are going to have a serious talk later. Proceed, Ghost. The door is now accessible. <laughs> I I was so amused the first time I heard that. It's still just as amusing. The defense turrets just shot two of their own. Maybe because of a certain power outage. Don't know what you're talking about. Feel free to open fire. I have a friend who reminds me of... Oh crap! Uh, Jacker. Uh, his name is Chris. He's a, he's a great guy. He has the same attitude as, as Jacker does as well. So this is teaching us a little bit about how to... about fighting. You'll note that as we run, ooh, we have this square that shows up. If we stand still, it shrinks. As we run around, it gets large. Works just like the targeting reticules that you have seen in the ages past in games like DSX. As you're moving, your accuracy is a little off. I'll explain what those things were when we see another one, which should be popping up here soon. We'll kill these guns as well while I'm waiting. There it is. These little guys pop up and begin repairing any turrets that are around. Let them if you leave them long enough, they will actually succeed in doing so. Later on, the guns will drop things. Right now, however, we don't get that because still early tutorial. Can you read me? We can't 
see into that room. What's happening? There's something suspicious in here. It looks like... What? What is it? Just a box. <sighs> <laughs> this room remains one of my favorite rooms because it helps you figure out Ghost's personality type, which is mischievous. that sound the echoes I believe it are because ghost is thinking as For what she's information Houston I'm busy <sighs> all right what were you saying three androids being dropped on your position oh thanks for the heads up Let's see how long it takes them to repair these I think those little drones the ones that were on the ground are quicker to repair than those drones are the ones on the ceiling they also take less hits, and I think they do slightly less damage. That we just picked up is a recharge. It gives us more ammo for our gun, rapidly restoring it. These are obviously melee robots. Reminds me of an epic, actually. They're pretty clever. They will jump up and down to get you. They'll take elevators and lifts and what have you as well. This is a restore thing. This will restore 20 hit points to you. Any of the ones that you don't need are translucent. And they remain here, I think, throughout your entire current session or until the room reloads. Uh, if we were to leave and come back here after maybe like 15 minutes, the things would respawn, both the enemies and the crates. But until then, I think this would still be floating there, so you're not wasting it, because if you take any damage, you can come back here and pick it up again. Or pick it up, period. Wow, she really pissed them off. Yeah, but she's handling it. You think she's... Calm line. Oh, whoops. You can use crates as cover. As well, the enemies will shoot them first to get to you. If I can exchange shots. Nope. Just as a shit. Whoa, missed shooting the roof. There we go. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. That was a that was an accidental swear. You see me shooting the walls is because I know later on there's secrets in them, and I have yet to understand what signifies a destroyable wall from a non-destroyable one, other than luck. Oh yeah, she does this cool flip in the air too. Pretty freaking awesome. Oh. Houston, that box had a strange cube. Shall I pick it up? Ghost, hold on while we scan it. Do you know what it is? This is fascinating. It's energy in cube form that can be absorbed and collected within the chassis. Did she just find Energon? Funny. No, not Energon. Man, not sure what it's used for up there. When in doubt, follow RPG rules. Pick up everything because you'll need it later. Oh, not again, please. Jacker, this is real life, not a game. What's the difference, Dr. Falcon? Collect them as you see them. We'll find out their purpose later, Ghost. Acknowledged. These are currency, basically. We'll be using them to purchase things later on both consumables and permanent stat increases or new weapons and upgrades for those weapons. A large cube is worth 10. The longer you go without picking them up, the smaller they become until they vanish. So you want to pick them up quickly. Let's show you. After a few seconds, that will shrink. Now it's worth only 6. It will shrink again, be worth 2, and then one final time to 1, and then it goes away forever. complication. I see the door from here. 
Sit tight while I hack into the relevant node. How long is it going to take? I don't know. Go for a walk or something. Take a walk? Sure. I'll do that. There we go. Let's see if that robot I saw is smart enough to control. Ugh, let's get this over with. Where's that panel? Time to head back. What the hell? The door is open. Heading through. Man, ghost, what was that? I was instructed to take a walk. So I did. You're not gonna explain what that was? Nope. Trade secret. <laughs> She's so adorable. I know we were instructed not to blow things up unless we needed to, but we kind of need to blow up everything. This will be especially true in a few more seconds. Houston, requesting controls to an immobile lift. Sure thing. Seems like there's a control room past the gap. Can you confirm? Let me take a look. Confirmation on the room's location and the presence of one robot. All right. I'll work on getting into that system. Don't worry. I'll be back. While in ghost form, you can move up and down into unroomed areas, rooms that are off the map. You can move in any direction that you wish. You can control a robot and you can leave it any time you wish as well and repossess them. They don't seem to mind. That's right, we can also fast return immediately to our shell from anywhere in the game if we abandoned it. If our shell's destroyed, however, well, we're gonna end up back at a sprint station. Hey boys, hacking going well. You can't just drop an Arnold Schwarzenegger oldie quote and- Good job, Ghost. Fantastic work. No, this is ridiculous. I can't- Go on, Ghost. I think Jacker is having a moment. Oh, I didn't even explain. We just walked the android up to the blue thing. It, that is what lowered that, obviously. We'll find a few of these that also do other things besides move around platforms, but for the most part, that's what they do. And right now we're farming Energon. Crates have a decent chance of dropping them. And we want all the energy we can get. I literally mean all of it. Houston, door. It's gonna take a while to hack. Are you able to walk down to the level below? Sure. Not that I'd like it. Looks like there's a switch below. And the guards near it have laser weapons. Sounds like fun. Walk initiated. This is where things get really kind of cool. The robots, first off, can immediately tell when you're possessed, or rather, when you possess one of them. But you have, like, you don't take any damage from being possessed by them. So we can just keep possessing them and killing them and possessing them and killing them and they can kill us over and over and it doesn't matter. The only reason why you might care is if you want every anything that these guys drop, Energon in particular. But don't let that make you too greedy. It's better to be to be safe than dead. Oh sure, shortcuts. The game is filled with shortcuts. That was the original um, 3D printer that we had entered and activated. Now if we die, we have a much faster way to get back here. Done. 
Sesame. Alarm deactivated. You get awesome achievements, and this awesome achievement screen shows up when you actually complete them, like taking no damage and surviving the first time of a certain security level in a room, which you'll see later on. But we probably won't find any of them, because I am playing through the game for the first time, obviously, on a different save slot. Let's get our reward! Beating these terminals will generally always give you boxes afterwards. The boxes are not always 100% safe, but like 95% of the time they are. Sometimes they'll drop things you don't want to drop on top of you, on top of you. They also respawn. Rather, this resets after so long, similar to how the rooms will respawn of enemies. Later on, we'll be wanting to revisit these locations to get more energon to be able to purchase stuff. Yes, that's right. Each level, each room has an alarm level. This room is now level 2. That number up there signifies how difficult a room will be when enemies are dropped into it. Oh, let's just go back. Wait for it to turn around, and then we'll drop down and kill it. Oh, the key card. Found the blue security card. Good job, Ghost. Proceed ahead. And you can see it up there. We'll hold on to that for the rest of the game, as far as I'm aware. Later key cards won't have the entire password on them, and we'll have to complete it by finding all the bits or pieces of it. Generally, it means that we have to find several, well, copies of the key card or unlock or the encryption on it in order to proceed. We also have a roll. There we go. Rolling, well, it speeds you up very slightly. That's generally the only thing it does for Ghost, unless you start leveling up your roll. You can obviously use it to duck under things, too. Alright, let's activate the next one. Shooting, obviously, and keep destroying as many things as possible during here, during these stages. Uh, almost done. The rooms flood with enemies, so if you can keep killing them, you should go oh, make every attempt to do so. Sorry, everyone. I'm used to having certain skills and that stuff. One was easy. Alarm deactivated. I'm used to having certain skills and abilities that this character, well, currently doesn't have. Key boxes today. Well, actually, it's always key boxes. The boxes are not dropped, as far as I'm aware, depending upon how well you do. Well, the rooms, however, seem to drop just that, that single type of enemy. I've noticed that certain rooms only spawn certain types of things. Hey, we made it to the room! Now, we can possess the little robots, but not the big ones. Although, to my knowledge, I don't think there's any... We can't do anything? Yeah, we can't, we can't go anywhere. And there's nothing on the other side, either.
Okay, we currently don't have any mission. And we can't get through that door. So, let's drop down. Wonder if we could actually go back down there again if we wanted to. Well, we we're unable to even check. Oh, nope. That just shut on us. Oh, our first item. The Dragon Whelp. Creature that follows us. Can only exist if you have Unepic in your Steam library. Well, I do have Unepic, so we get a cool free item. How about that? It's not necessarily a game changer, but it is really helpful. I think if you didn't have this, you could purchase an equivalent in just about another 20 minutes of playing from the game. We can spawn it, and it will follow us around, and it, and it will shoot things down, similar to the familiars we had in on Epic. Um, we can also make it go away, and it comes back. It can't be destroyed, to my knowledge, and we have an infinite amount of uses of it. Icon in the gate seems to indicate another 3D printer. That's good news. Enter and unlock it, so we can continue from here if your body is destroyed. Acknowledged. Ghost Boogan here. Best if you could scan yourself again. You've picked up new stuff, and it would be nice to have them next time your body is printed. Understood. I'll try to scan myself anytime I have new items. Wouldn't want to lose anything important. But what if I get destroyed before I can scan all the cool weapons or power-ups I've found? Try checking the wreckage of your last body, I suppose. You might be able to recover something. That's such a weird conversation. What do I do if I die? Can I get my weapons back? That's just, that's just weird. But she's a, ran she's a robot, so... Makes sense. Okay, everyone. We're gonna stop here and we'll go check on my recording. Thank you guys for watching. When we come back, we'll explore more of this area. The actual game has begun, and I'll see you guys then. Take care.